Hey, three things real quick before we start. First one, doing something a little different today. This is a stream we did at twitch.tv slash NandoViewMovies. I've edited it down significantly, so we've only got like the highlights here. But this is a little fun thing that patrons have been talking about for a while. I figured might as well throw it in the channel, see if people like it. Second thing. In the video, I kind of mischaracterized Claw's arc from Black Panther, mostly because A, I haven't watched that movie in that long, and then B, because back in the 2000s, every supervillain actually wanted to get captured. That was part of their plan. That's why I kind of think I put that on Claw, even though that's not something that he really wanted to do. He just wanted to sell a vibranium. Third thing, the Nebula Plus version of this video that's available exclusively on Nebula, the streaming service that I helped to create, has a lot of extra time where we talked about Thanos' plan, talked about some of the other villains, guessing which ones will have good and not so good plans. We even get into the Marvel Netflix villains a little bit. So that is on Nebula. All right, let's do this. Here's what we're doing, everybody. We're going to spend the next however long this takes ranking the villains in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I have a list, a very big list with like 40 of them, maybe even more. I'm counting the ones from the show, not counting anything from Loki. And uh, and I'm not going to spoil the one from um, Falcon and the Winter Soldier that you could spoil. But I have a stand in there, starting all the way back at Iron Man. And I'm going to rank them just based on how good their plans are, how much sense their plans make. I think it should be fun. I don't really usually do this, and, but the Patreon, someone mentioned it, and it would feel like it would be cool. I think a lot of it will be incredibly subjective, which means that I, whatever I said is right, because I'm the, the guy who's making the video. That's all I got. I've, there's a big list. We're going to go through all of them. Some are probably going to spend more time on than others. I think it should be fun. And uh, yeah, let me show you guys the list itself. All right. So this is my uh, this is my list. These are all the Marvel villains. So you'll see... There's like more, more gonna fill up as we keep moving on, but I couldn't figure out what the best way to present Tear Maker was. I have a ton of them, and I think, I think it's pretty comprehensive. So first one, we have Jan Rog. I'm going to put him in the not a great plan category. I think Jan Rog's plan is pretty stupid when you get down to it, because it all, it's, he, his whole deal is like, keep, Carol in check and use her as a weapon to further the interests of the Kree. And then when you get down to it, it's like, well, how are you going to do that? And it's like, well, I'm just going to hope really hard that she doesn't remember what her deal is. And then when she inevitably figures it out, because anyone could tell her, like the scrolls, uh, I'm just going to tell her, no, that's not what's going on. Uh, so I think Jan Rog is in the not a great plan category. And his plan is kind of the same plan. Let me see if I can find her or them with the supreme intelligence which is the Cree like brain thing uh also on the not a great plan category i wish i know they didn't do this in the movie usually in the comics the supreme intelligence is this big giant head with tentacles for hair like floating in a jar kind of and by giant i mean like as big as like a room that guy is never shown instead you get this which i think it's it's kind of a shame because the villain the supreme intelligence the best picture you can find of them from the marvel movie is of the actual mentor character just because that's who she trusts so that's pretty that's pretty dumb all right next up we got ulysses claw <laughs> Is your plan anything but a disaster if you get double-crossed and killed during it? I'm going to say no. <laughs> I think his plan's a disaster in both movies, really. The first movie doesn't really have a plan. He's just approached. This is the age of Ultron. Ultron's like, I want uh, the vibranium. And then he makes like an offhanded comment and gets his arm cut off. Um, so that's not a great plan, although that really wasn't a plan. Um, but then in Black Panther, his plan appears to be cause like havoc, get Black Panther's attention, get captured and get rescued by Killmonger and then Killmonger just kills him. So like, I don't, I think this might be a really, really bad plan. All right. Next up, Grandmaster. Let's say fine plan. I think this this is okay. His plan was rule over Sakar. 
But as far as being like an evil dictator who holds gladiator contests, like it seems like this has been going on for a very long time. He's having a lot of fun. It only falls apart because of the incredibly, like the bizarre coincidence that both Thor, Loki, Valkyrie, and Hulk all land on the same planet. Especially considering what we know about Asgardians, the fact that three of them go through wormholes and just accidentally meet, and then one of them is actually friends with another one from work, and then one of them is also that guy's enemy, but now it's, it's like just, he really should have won, and this should have been going on forever. And you know what? We don't know what he's up to. I think he could still be, he could have weaseled his way back up to the top of the Sakarian uh government or whatever so yeah i don't i don't see why not next up we got yellow jacket darren cross he's not a great plan because hope is involved in it at a company level and he's cool with that he's just like yeah i mean i'm obviously i'm going to invite my arch business rival's daughter he could have gotten away with it if it wasn't for his ego winter soldier he is na so that's what we're talking about with na he's a character who does not have a plan he is a pawn in a plan Kaecilius. Kaecilius almost has a great plan. Here's what, here's my thing with Kaecilius. His goal was to overthrow Tilda Swinton, which he accomplished. His goal was to kill lots and lots of sorcerers, which he also accomplished. He didn't account for Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange was new, which I totally understand. He killed the guys in the New York Sanctum. The London Sanctum and the Beijing Sanctum. I think that's the third one. And, and he disgraced the Ancient One by like showing off that she's part of the bad guy. It's not part of the bad guy team, but she has the Dormammu brand. And the thing with him too is even though he gets killed, he's like a religious zealot, right? That's kind of what we call him. So it's not like he's like, oh, I'm, gonna live forever on earth ruling earth and Dormammu's like no actually you will die I'm killing you double crossing you it's almost like he's like I just want to become purple energy in the sky and Dormammu's like yeah I'm gonna do that I'm I'm giving him great plan I think Icelius had a great plan he stole the book he got in a fight with um the ancient one in the beginning of the movie and like he was still able to keep going he man he gets caught in the um whatever that thing is the big chain machine thing and he escapes i'm pretty i'm pretty impressed at the first great plan here nikuza guy his name starts with an a can't even remember what it was i'm giving him not a great plan because he pissed off hawkeye and then got in a sword fight with him i get it if you have a sword and the guy that's trying to kill you has a sword it's like what am i gonna not try to sword fight him but still it's like don't try to fight this guy who's wearing his special like assassin hoodie to the fight because he's gonna get you all right next we've got mysterio i'm gonna give mysterio fine plan i think he had a fine plan in practice it mostly worked out in theory i think mysterio's plan is insane but it's but he knew something i don't right because yeah if thanos comes by mysterio falls apart I think the, the reason his plan is fine plan and not great plan, I think all of his CGI and stuff, like, what happens when he gets in an elevator? You know? What happens in a small space where the drones just can't fly? Also, are these drones silent? Yeah, because everybody in these movies who can fly always flies. Right? Like, they, they fly when it's convenient for them and fun. So, if they tried to do that, if there was, like, a big fight, Captain Marvel and War Machine would fly and he'd just like fly and then, you know, they'd be like, here, I'll give you a pull. I'll, I'll like, I'll take you and help throw you at him. And he'd be like, let me get on the ground first. And then you get on the ground. Let me take off my bubble helmet. Okay, throw away. So like, yeah, I don't know. Not a great plan. Uh, but he didn't have to get that far. So I'm still giving it fine. And yeah, and he got his revenge. Uh, curse NA because he's a henchman. Crossbones, not a great plan because he dies. He wants to steal the red stuff in Civil War, and he almost does. Like, he had this suicide vest on. He was getting beaten up by Captain America, and he, like, kind of pulls it at the last minute, like, ah, ha, ha, I'm gonna defeat you anyway. And I feel like when Captain America rips the gauntlets off of your hand, suicide vest, go for it. Like, that's, you're fine. 
That is as good as you're going to get. Dormammu. Fine plan. So I would say, in all of the ways Caecilia succeeds, Dormammu, like, half succeeds. Where, because Dormammu's like, hey, Caecilia, do X, Y, and Z. And Caecilia's like, absolutely, I'll do all those things. And instead of... The real failure in the movie comes from Dormammu getting beaten by Doctor Strange. So once the ball gets to the finish line, Dormammu is not able to dunk it. U.S. Agent, I'm going to say, is in the not a great plan category. Because, here's my reasoning for this. I think if we're looking at, like, how will plans of his go in the future, I think we can only expect they're going to fail. I almost think maybe, like, people didn't know that was him. Like, people just assumed there was a new Captain America. Because what are the odds that they would let that guy continue? Like, you would see that on TV and be like, oh, because I assume the other guy's in jail. In the comics, John Walker changed his name because he was, I think, kind of the same reason. He was a little bit sad about all the murders he did. Um, and he, he changed his name to Jack Daniel. So he went from Johnny Walker to Jack Daniels. So I think if he had showed up and he'd be like, I'm Jack Daniel, I'm a different guy, everybody would have been cool with it. I'm going to give Killmonger fine plan. Here's why. I think Killmonger's plan is a very well executed until he kills Black Panther. He has a, his plan is going very well, and then he makes a James Bond villain level mistake at the very end that messes it all up by instead of like impaling T'Challa on, you know, any of the many weapons or just like cutting his head off, he throws him off of the, off of the waterfall and then T'Challa survives. Yeah, Val next. Uh, I'm going to say NA because we don't know what her plan is yet. Batrock, disaster. Uh, his plan is really, really bad both times. He is working for Fury, right? We learned to steal from the Lemurian star. And then he gets bodied by Captain America, goes to jail, gets out of jail, I guess, sometime between falcon and the winter soldier and the winter soldier and falcon and the winter soldier and then he gets caught again here's here's how bad his plan is he is fighting the falcon and he's like oh man i've got to get away from him maybe i'll use my wingsuit like what planet are you on i i did think that was insane i kind of figured that would be more of a like they were just wingsuiting and he shows up mid wingsuit. But no, they see the Falcon. No, they're fighting the Falcon and go, let's see if we can do what he's doing, but better without any technology with just like, you know, a parachute. And it's, it's insane. Vulture. Oh, this is tricky. I really want to give Vulture a great plan. He did such a good job. He tried so hard <laughs> to do good plan. The thing with the Vulture is his plan for a while was just secretly steal. But you'd also figure eventually his plan is going to be like, all right, but I might have to tangle with somebody and I should be prepared for that. First time he finds Spider-Man, just picks him up, throws him. And like that works really well because Spider-Man doesn't know he's there. The, the second time he goes for Spider-Man is when they fight in the car, like on the train or uh, truck. And he gets kind of lucky. Spider-Man gets knocked out. The third time he's fighting Spider-Man, Spider-Man beats him. And Vulture only wins because Spider-Man accidentally blows up everything. Fourth time he fights Spider-Man, he literally has the gift of flight. And he is on a plane and then he loses. I think Vulture's plan also falls apart if he succeeds through the movie. I think Tony Stark would find him. And also, uh, like uh, Chris pointed out, doesn't have to do it. Speaking of uh, not great plans, I'm going to put M'Baku in not great plan. He uh, he just does a surprise challenge to T'Challa. Like, I feel like that's his whole plan. It's not a great plan because he loses it. And, like, that's got to be so embarrassing for you. Because, like, it's a surprise, right? It's not like it's on the docket and it's like, all right, the, the, the Dabaris, they're going to show up and they're going to fight. And, you know, everyone's going to be cool with it because, like, you know, they deserve a shot at the throne. No, he shows up and does what is essentially the, like, I object to this wedding move and then gets dumped. He does not win the objection. So, like, yeah, not a great plan. Next, we got Hela. So here's here's why Hela's plan doesn't quite work. Hela should know. I think she knows this. That you will lose if you 
the only way you can lose this thing is if the giant fireman comes and gets you. And she tours Odin's throne room and sees the fireman's helmet and the fire that if you throw the fireman's helmet in, he shows up and attacks you and she does nothing about that. She doesn't go like, oh, well, let's launch this thing to fucking space. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to give Helen not a great plan. Her plan kind of stinks. Thor and Loki fight her. Both of them are alive, but she knows that and she doesn't do anything about it. And like she's in, she's making moves. I'm not saying she has to track him down, but at least be like, we got to find the guys. Like, let's, 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 you know, send some of my forces out. I, yeah, I think, I think Hella's got not a great plan. Ghost. Here's, here's what, here's what I'm saying for her. Fine plan. It worked. Uh, Nebula. Nebula cuts and runs when she realizes it's over, right? Like, it's like, oh, uh, Ronan's gonna lose. Never mind. I'll cut off my hand and just start over. And then she joins up with Taserface. And then that plan is successful. And then she leaves again. Like, every time, Nebula really knows when to get out. And then she becomes good. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 Nebula, I'm so sorry. You're in the not a great plan category. Um, because she completely loses the game in uh, Infinity War. How did I forget this? Nebula, Thanos only knows where to find the Soul Stone. Because Nebula tries to kill him, fails, and then he's able to extract that information from her brain. So, like, when her plan is stay alive, that's great. Like, she's really crushing it. And yeah, kill Gamora. Not an amazing plan, but I think she's always making moves towards it. It's when we get to the part of her plan when it's kill Thanos, it goes off the rails. She fails miserably. Also, this isn't a complete plan thing, but she is the character that could have held back uh, Peter Quill uh, and chose not to. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Nebula not a great plan. I was really bummed. I was excited to give her a great plan, but she plans to go kill Thanos, fails, and, and kind of ruins everything. I think Thanos knew that if he wanted to get the, all six Infinity Stones, he needed to get them all in the course of like a day, because if people had time to be like, oh, we gotta, you know, we gotta stop Thanos, they would have worked together and maybe been able to. And uh, so the reason, so people ask, like, why didn't he do it before? I think it's because he didn't know where all six of them were. I think he knew where five of them were and was like, uh, there's a sixth one out here somewhere. But, like, I can't start collecting them until I at least have a kind of sense for where the sixth one might be. And that's where this comes in, is, like, when he catches Nebula, that's the point where he learns where the Soul Stone is. And it's like, oh, now I have the power to go actually, you know, start collecting stones. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, Thanos' plan makes no sense. Thanos is Jeff. Don't don't get excited for a great plan for Thanos. Oh, all right. We have another disaster. We have Laufey from Thor. <laughs> Thor one. Laufey might be one of the biggest disasters because no one believes Loki in that movie. In Thor one, everybody is like, I don't know, man. That's Loki. Why would we trust him? And Laufey is the single character who trusts him and gets killed uh, in the process. So, like, yeah, Laufey is the worst. I wish there was a lower level I could. Because not only does he get himself killed, he gets lots of frost giants killed. Yeah, Laufey sucks. Zemo, great plan. Twice. Two really good plans that totally, pretty much 100% work. I mean, we all know why his Civil War plan is great. It doesn't make any sense, but it works. So, like, you got to give it to him. And then his Falcon and the Winter Soldier plan might be even dumber. He is broken out of jail, just, like, kind of randomly, which is bizarre. Is eventually brought back to the Dora Milaje, but, like, he seems cool with that. I think by this point in the show, and, like, in the MCU, we're supposed to think, like, Zemo's, whatever his plan is, he's still winning. And I guess the, the Dora Milaje take another raft, so, like, he's probably going to be in charge of the Thunderbolts anyway. And his silly little butler kills all the rest of the super soldiers. So he is also able to eliminate all but one, with Walker being the exception, all but one super soldier. And Walker's pretty much disgraced. And yeah, you're right, Umbu. It's mostly coincidences. But what are you going to do? Maybe he knows something. Like coincidences that work really well and then 
his ego gets in the way and then he fails like that kind of coincidence absolutely you're you're in the not a great playing category because it's like you were just coasting almost kind of like hella not really though but like you were coasting on getting lucky a couple times and then you failed but like he, he didn't fail in the end so gotta give it to him strucker disaster uh he is one of uh one of the other worst plans his plan is so bad that one of his guys is like we're doing a really bad job we should probably surrender and he's like yeah i guess we should and then he gets put in jail and swiftly murdered off screen. Malekith, he might have great plan. I think his plan is as good as it could have been. I'm going to say Malekith is fine plan. Because, like, the movie's not great. But the plan is okay. You know, it's like, we're going to, there's a convergence. I'm going to wait for the convergence. A lot of patience. I really appreciate that. I can, you know, respect it. He goes and gets the Aether. From Natalie Portman, which also works, even though there's like a little double cross in there. Uh, he also manages to kill Frigga, which makes Odin uh, all bummed out. So he doesn't intervene. The only part of the only part of Malkit's plan that doesn't work is he thinks that Curse can kill Thor. Kind of, I guess you could kind of half say he like underestimates Loki, but also like at that point it was either that or get killed by Thor and Loki. So like he kind of had to go with it. Like, he could, he could have maybe stayed and used the Aether to kill him. But we see later, even with it, he's not able to kill Thor. So, I think his plan was pretty good. This is tough. Nobody wants to not do this more than me. Because we've already said, if you get double-crossed, you're in a lot of trouble. That is very close to being in the disaster plan category. The only reason, besides my complete bias, that I'm going to give Justin Hammer not a great plan is that he wants to attack Tony Stark's legacy. And I think he kind of succeeds. And he says that in the movie. He says, like, you gotta, you want to get a man, you got to you gotta attack his legacy. Um... I think if his plan was sell these drones to the government and that was the whole plan, probably not going to work. Uh, nobody's going to buy him anymore. Uh, and I think hiring Whiplash kind of worked for a little bit and then it didn't. I think part of why he gets not a great plan and not disaster is he survives. Yeah, and that's true. His Armor Wars plan, if he's in Armor Wars, might be great. Ego. Let's talk about what Ego does. Ego... Collects the children. He has Yandu do that. That's been working for a very long time. Plants the flowers. That also apparently is fine. That's work. That works for him. No one knows he exists or talks about him, which is also amazing, all things considered. It's not a great plan because he loses and he dies. However, he also loses because he throws out just out of nowhere. Also, I put that tumor in your mother. And like, if it wasn't for that moment... He would be, he would win. And I don't even want to say it's like an ego thing. I know, ego. Cause it, it's not. It seems like he's genuinely just, he doesn't get it. He doesn't understand that that's going to upset Peter. So I can't, I can't fault him too much for not completely understanding the customs of like the entire world. Ooh, I have Loki on here twice. That's fun. I don't know what this is going to be. All right. Um, Let's say, uh, let's say the first one, let's say this is Loki, because this is Loki. I knew I put someone on here twice. I couldn't remember who it was. Oh my God, I have three Lokis. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Well, we're going to judge each of Loki's plans separately, one at a time, starting at the, starting in the beginning. We got, this is Avengers Loki. Oh no, sorry. This is Thor Loki. Thor one Loki. Nobody else, right? Nobody else gets more than one guy. That's so funny. Yeah, maybe there have been three Lokis all along. We're starting with Thor Loki. And let's all remember this. Not a great plan for Thor Loki. It makes sense and it would probably work if he would kill Thor. Or, which he seems to try to do, or if he just didn't let the Warriors 3 go. Like, without them getting involved in that moment, we're so good. It's totally fine. And... Instead, he, like, lets them go. I don't, I still don't know why. He's fine with killing everybody else. So, I don't know, might as well kill them too. You don't like him. It's not like he's in love with Sif or anything, which, like, maybe you could say, like, no, that's why I didn't kill it, but that's not what he does. So, I'm going to say not a great plan for 
original recipe, recipe Loki. We'll get to him later. Aisha, I think is this character's name. I don't think she, like, cares about her plan. I think she's going to be uh, not a great plan as well. Because their plan, her plan is just get revenge on these guys for stealing your batteries. And she doesn't do that because she just sends all these silly video game drones out of them. And, like, that doesn't work. And you know what? By the end of the movie, when we see her again, her hair is all down. So it's like, oh, man, maybe she's been really upset about this. Now, there's the Adam plan, says uh, Comic Quest says. She may succeed in creating the sexiest being in the universe, so we'll have to see. She could, her plane could get redeemed, and maybe if we revisit this, her plane will be, will be higher on the list. But so far, yeah, not looking too, too hot, uh, of a plan. This is a tough one. Mmm. Was Carly's plan a disaster? I think so? Alright, so spoilers for Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Everybody on her team dies, and it's mostly her fault. I don't think she succeeds the way she wants to succeed. Like, I think she wants a way more extreme version of what would eventually happen. And right now, she's going to get, like, a pretty, like, All right, we're going to do better, Carly. And she'll be, like, in heaven or whatever. Like, no! I wanted you to help the refugees! And they're like, we're just going to do better. Yeah, the system is not dismantled or even properly reassessed. I agree at Comic Quest. We have the scrolls from Captain Marvel. So he does a great job and so much of what he's doing works, but he's not really a villain. He's like a secret fake villain. I think I got to put him back there. Next up, Scorpion. Disaster. Really stinks. Also, I, I don't know a lot about like drug deals for illegal arms, but I feel like the Staten Island Fair is probably a pretty bad place to do it. If something goes wrong, like it does in this situation, you have no control over it. Bigger disaster than the Scorpion movie with the Rock. You bite your tongue, Jonathan Pope. That movie's terrific. I love the Scorpion King. Very funny. Um, also, that character's name is Matthias, and as a Matthew, uh, can't help but respect it. Now we have Avengers Loki. Okay, just like I planned, uh, we're getting to our second Loki. His plan is ruined by killing Coulson, right? That's what brings the Avengers together, even though like, they were already kind of together. But that's like the that's the final straw. I think I have to. Because in the movie, Iron Man literally says to him, not a great plan. I think this has to be a not a great plan. And yeah, I don't think he knew he had the Infinity Stone in the Scepter. I think he knew what the Scepter did. Uh, if we did, then that time when Ebony Maw is like, your humble personage never has a being had two Infinity Stones. No, look, he had it. He had two. It was, he definitely had two. He lost them. Maybe nobody knew, but he did have those. Whiplash. Whiplash just loses fight after fight after fight with with Tony. There's no point where Whiplash is like really on top at all. He loses the Monaco fight even though he's fighting Tony in a car with no suit. And Tony's still able to like bumble around. Takes, does all the drone stuff. Which is like a decent plan. But the drones don't really work because he didn't do good enough software that Black Widow couldn't hack it. So yeah, I'm going to say Whiplash gets disaster. And he dies. Jan doing Guardians 1, and a pretty much not a villain the whole time. Ronan. One of the great disaster plans in Marvel history. His plan is like, okay, I'm gonna get the Power Stone, which he does by first sending some guys to do it, but then they get, th th that doesn't work for them. Then he sends Gamora to get it, that doesn't work. Then he tries to get it from the jail, that doesn't work. He eventually gets it because Drax literally calls him. I guess, you know, the part of his plan that's good, as, a, as like a military leader, where his plan is just dive bomb the city, like, that's not a bad plan. And he is able to use the purple infinity stone and not get killed. But then he, uh, yeah, he, he goes right up against Thanos and is like, hey, Thanos, it's okay. Even though this is working out great for me and will probably be fine, I'm going to like insult you even if Ronan had survived and killed everybody on Xandar Thanos would have absolutely killed him he's not good we don't really see him do any fighting with the hammer either which is kind of a bummer you know he's got like a really cool weapon that you could you should be able to like swing around and do flips and throw but instead he just fires you know he just shoots it like Mordo so Mordo's plan doesn't start until the very end of the movie, but um, he does kill Pangborn, the guy who plays basketball, Benjamin Bratt's character. <laughs> oh my god, wait, is that Benjamin Bratt? 
does that mean we got the guy from Catwoman who does the silly basketball scene? And they were like, let's cast it in a Marvel movie. And I was like, what am I doing? You're playing basketball. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say N.A. You know what, too? We didn't see anything coming from him out of WandaVision, uh, which is a pretty big magical thing. So, I don't know. Mordo, I feel like, especially with Multiverse of Madness, I wouldn't be shocked if we never see this character again at all. Um, but yeah, he gets N.A. because I think his plans, we'll see more of him in the future. Zola. Great plan? Takes over S.H.I.E.L.D. from the inside. Manages to make Bucky a super soldier. He also quits the Nazis at the right moment. That's what I kind of said about Nebulas. It's just like, get in, get out. I think the plan's in, and we'll get to this whenever the other guy, whenever Pierce comes up. I think the plans in Winter Soldier are awesome. Like, our characters are just able to magically disappear. Like, they just, uh, you just escape. The escapes in that movie are insane. He chooses his own death. He even gets a sweet burn, right? He's like, uh, guess not one of us is out of time before the thing explodes. Like, it's, a, it's just, it's just terrific. I think Arnim Zola is one of my favorite villains in the MCU now that I think about it. I love when he's like, when he shows up in, uh, in, in, uh, Falcon Winter, or excuse me, Falcon Winter Soldier. I love when he shows up in, um, in Winter Soldier and someone says, like, it's Arnold a German scientist. And he's like, first of all, a correction. I am Swiss. I think that's super funny. All of Zola's inventions totally work. The Red Skull's plan would have worked if he probably just listened to Zola more. Zola's probably kicking around. There's a backup. There better be a backup of Zola. Like, all that tape. I I don't know. Has someone done the math? I mean, you could put it on a flash drive. So, I don't know. Either way, you could totally have him somewhere. All right. Now we're doing Loki 2 from Thor 2 and and, uh, Thor Ragnarok. Unless there's another Loki here somewhere. Uh, No, I guess this is the last one. I'm going to say Loki gets not a great plan here, too. So, that's three not a great plans for Loki, including two back to back. Loki's plan in Thor Ragnarok, in, in Thor 2, works really well. I mean, first of all, his mom gets killed, but that's like, I don't think that's part of the plan. I think that's just a bad, impulsive decision. But the plan to like double cross Odin and get Thor on his side is great. But the plan between Thor 2 and Thor 3 that gets Odin killed and frees Hela leads to the destruction of Asgard, the only place he's ever gonna rule. And then, you know, he dies eventually, but Thanos would have probably killed him no matter what was happening. He ingratiates himself with the Grandmaster, that's true. But I guess, like, if Loki's plan is to rule Asgard, if that's his goal, then he fails about as miserably as you can fail without being killed. Oh, and he gets an Infinity Stone out of it. That's a pretty good... Actually, this plan's not too bad. Yeah, he gets a bunch of Asgardians killed, but, like, who does he care? You know, whatever. And he does, he does, you know, win over the love and support of his brother. And, very important, he gets to, he steals the Cosmic Cube. You know, I like Loki. I like he's making moves. And you know what? I like that by the end of Thor Ragnarok, he's gone, he's graduated from two not great plans to a fine plan. And I'm pretty impressed with that. Way to go, Loki. Hayward. Now, is Hayward's plan a disaster? Or is he a terrible villain with an okay plan? I mean, the white vision part of the plan fails immediately. Like that, I I think that whole, if you assume that their fight, all that takes place in real time, then like white vision leaves. And then 10 minutes later, it's like, oh, what happened? It's, it's gone. It's gone forever. We'll never find it again. Uh Oh, so terrible plan. His plan with Wanda was incredibly fraught. And, uh, and then his plan to kill the kids is really bad. But so, yeah, he's, it's, it's, his plan is a disaster, and it's because he's not a super well-written character. Black Order, I had to put him in here. Actually, no, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna say the Black Order's plan is fine. Yeah, and I think, I think that's right, Dogberry. If we're giving the Black Order responsibility for most of the plans we see in Infinity War, they succeed when Thanos ultimately succeeds. Yeah, I think that's true. I think isolating Vision, getting Vision away from Shuri is big. It's a really good plan. It's a stupid plan, but it, it works. Like, it's, it's a solid plan. Also, Comic Quest, yes, they do all die, but they're also, like, their deaths are the kind of, like, I think they'd be okay with it, because, like, it's in service to Thanos. So, like, I'm sure they're not psyched to die, but I think they're 
they're probably fine with it. Like, the funny thing about Abomination's plan is his plan is like, I want to be as strong as the the Hulk is. It's going to be so cool. And then he gets strong as the Hulk. He gets Hulk powers and still gets beat up by the Hulk. And we have never seen him since. So, like, yeah, not a great plan. So, Pierce. This is a very good plan. The only reason why the Pierce back part of the plan doesn't work is because the superheroes, Captain America, Nick Fury, all of them are able to just escape through random holes. It's insane in that movie that Pierce does not succeed in killing Nick Fury when the Winter Soldier flips the car over and Nick Fury has to crawl away and he is instead able to use his weird little lightsaber to escape into the sewer and Winter Soldier's like, oh, shucks, and then he leaves. Like, that is... I guess it's kind of his fault for hiring Winter Soldier and not being like, no, no, no. If he goes into the subway, you go. You follow him down the subway. But then later, the guys are also able to escape because Maria Hill infiltrates his organization. His plan fails because he underestimates the love of Stephen Bucky. And Nick Fury is able to trick him. That's still pretty good. Like, that's a that's a high bar to clear. He could not have... I don't think he could have done better... Except for telling one of the guys to follow Nick Fury down a hole. I'm going to say instead of great plan, he's getting fine plan. Because parts of his plan fail in ways that Zola's does not. Right? Because a lot of the a lot of the technical stuff, like, it's on Pierce. What I mean is, like, the management side of things where he sends Bucky to kill Steve. And he's like, you got to do this. Like, that doesn't work. And that's not Zola's fault. That's his fault. Obadiah. Not a great plan. It's a shame that we started with a not a great plan, but um, leaving he makes so many of like the basic mistakes. Fights Tony in the middle of the like the middle of the city, gets his you know gets shot with his he- like not shot but like gets you know hit with a laser beam and his helmet is off because he ripped out his targeting system. Didn't solve the icing problem. His Iron Man suit isn't very good. Also, all the terrorist stuff he like leaves his. You know, you can just get onto his computer where all the terrorism information is. Like, Obadiah's original plan is to kill Tony Stark and then, like, take over the company. I understand why he thinks that's a good idea, but it's not. Like, Stark industry stock would plummet if Tony Stark, billionaire inventor kid, dies and you're left with this doofus who, like, uses a segue. And on top of that... The, the terrorists are like, you didn't tell us you wanted me to kill Tony Stark. And I guess what Obadiah Stane does at that point is nothing, right? Because it's not like he's, he, he could just go, okay, what do you want? Jericho missiles? I'll send you 50. I'll send you so many more than he could make in the amount of time it's going to take him to make them before he dies from whatever happened. Like, he should be able to further negotiate with the terrorists, but he seems to choose not to because he's Bored. I don't know. Ultron. I'm gonna, I think I give Ultron fine plan. Ultron's only mistake is vision. No, you know what? Not a great plan. Ultron, considering what Ultron can do and what he does is awful. Like, he has the ability to back himself up, like we're saying, and like, Ultron goes to uh, Sokovia with all of his robots and starts taking over the robots and then vision shows up and like gives him a you know gives him like a head hug and he's like you've locked me out of the net and it's like wait we don't have any other guys out there that you can just you don't have any backup guys you kidding me you kidding me dude you're the robot guy i think the fact that he tried to kill vision once when he was jarvis failed tried to then vision shows up again and then steals the vibranium body and uses that to pretty much neutralize him. I think it's a pretty bad plan. Also, he he get, kind of makes the same mistake as Ego where he's like, what? You guys didn't want me to kill all humans? Oh, my God. I thought you would be cool with that one. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. Also, he doesn't find the twins. The twins find him. It's not like he goes and seeks them out. He's just like sitting there and they go like they go check on him. But like. If he recruited them more actively, I think it maybe would be better. You'd feel like maybe his plan has some has some legs, but yeah, I don't think his plan's all that good. Red Skull. I'm gonna say Red Skull gets on a great plan as well. 
he touches the cosmic cube. He picks it up. You, you, you can't pick it up. And I think his ego, more than maybe anybody else on this list, really, like, is his big stumbling block. Yeah, I just don't think he's very good. He also should just kill Steve Rogers a couple times. He has some, he has some opportunities to kill Captain America. And instead, he's like, well, meet again, Captain America. And he gets in a special helicopter and it's like, you don't have to meet him again. You could just shoot him right now. I, I'd love for Red Skull to come back in the future and actually have a plan that isn't stupid. Um, there's a, there's a comic by, uh, Rick Remender. It's called the Uncanny Avengers where Red Skull steals Professor X's brain and uses it to mind control people, which is very cool of a plan. I don't know. We might see him back. This one, uh, we have the power broker. Ooh, who could that be? I'm going to say the power broker's plan is fine. So I'm not going to say too much about why in case you haven't seen Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But I mean, you know, it's not a very good plan. But at the end of the show, the power broker's like, but it is a good plan. And I'm like, all right, I guess it is. I don't know, man. I don't know what you want, but I think it's a fine plan. Samuel Stern. Mm. Samuel Stern's plan in Incredible Hulk 1, the Incredible Hulk only, uh, his plan is to use Hulk's blood to reverse engineer the Hulk, like, super serum experiment stuff. He makes the same mistake as Ultron and as Ego, where he goes like, and isn't it cool, Hulk, that I'm stealing your blood? Isn't that what you want? And Hulk is like, no. And he's like, what? What? I thought we were cool with me stealing your blood. So like, yeah, I'm going to say not a great plan. It's a bummer because I like this character a fair amount. He makes Abomination, but it's not as good. And then he gets bonked on the head. Also in the comic Fury's Big Day or Fury's Big Week, which I don't believe, yeah, is canon anymore. But if it was, like you were saying, comic comments, uh, Black Widow does beat him up in a comic tie-in. And like in a hallway, it's it's pretty lame. He could make a great plan. I mean, he's the leader. That's like his deal. He should be able to make a sick plan. Uh, he just hasn't yet. So he's in the not a great plan category. So, all right, we're getting some of the weirder ones. Mandarin. It's a it's a bad plan as a plan. Like, I don't think that plan is well put together. But I think on his part, for what he's getting out of it, he's great. And he's in prison and he's like, yo, yo, but you see, but you see, this is part of why the Mandarin's plans are insane. You can't impersonate a terrorist that apparently exists. That's pretty bad. <laughs> they don't love that. Um, I would assume. Never tried it. Like, it's like if you pretended to be like Bin Laden and just like assumed that he would, or like if you pretend to be a gang leader and just assume that the gang leader would be cool with it. Like he's, his character, we should see him being like tortured in the beginning of Shang-Chi because there is a real Mandarin in a world where there is not a Mandarin. It, great plan, or at least fine plan. In a world where there is a Mandarin, not a great plan. Uh, we got Shocker, Shocker 2, Bookie Mookie Shocker. Uh, that's not his name, is it? I forget. Uh, dude from Fargo. Um, he doesn't have a plan, he's a henchman. Wally Goggs. It's a crazy plan. And he doesn't almost get away. He, you know what? He almost gets away with it, honestly. He has the box on the ferry. God, Ant Man in the last few. You, you troublesome, but it, I think it's like a, not a great plan because like, you know, it isn't, but, um, I think it's better than I remember as a plan. It almost works for him. I'm pretty, I'm almost kind of proud for Sonny Birch. Taser face, not a great plan. Killed as part of the plan. That is a, as a solid way to have a not a great plan. General Ross. Now he is failing upwards. At an alarming rate, just an astonishing rate, he is able to get away with whatever he wants. He's the Secretary of Defense still, one assumes. He doesn't come up with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's a little weird. I figure he would be like a... I want his cameo there. I think he has to continue to be in charge because he's going to have to start the Thunderbolts. That's true. He does get the Sokovia Accords. That's pretty big. So, impressive. Now we have three really strange ones. I, I'm so happy these three got saved for last, because they may be some of the weirdest plans. First of all, we have Thanos. Now, there's like a billion kind of things that Thanos did. Like, his plan doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't It doesn't make sense, the half the resources thing. But he does get 
all of the Infinity Stones, and then he destroys them, which is a genius move. Very impressed by that move specifically, that I'm going to destroy the Infinity Stones that I do, don't have anymore, uh, so that no one can undo what I'm doing, because that's what they were going to, and like, yeah, I think that's really smart. You know what, I actually kind of like his plan in Endgame, because he could have moments where, and do I have to consider both Thanos's? Yeah, I'm, I'm taking him as one character, because I didn't accidentally put him on the list twice, like I did with somebody else. Um, but with Thanos, he could have captured Nebula in 2014. And then gotten the information from her. And then maybe gone and got the Infinity Stones. But I kind of like that Thanos was like, nah, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go get the gauntlet. They've got the gauntlet. I'm going to go run and get it from them. Like, he doesn't succeed, which is why it's fine plan. But considering how stupid it is, it's kind of genius. Aldrich Killian, disaster. It's, his plan is insane. And it goes really well for a while, which is kind of impressive how well he's able to keep this train going is he, you know, part of his plan involves kidnapping the president. He makes a fake terrorist that lives in Florida that Tony is easily able to find. He also, like, has all these explosions coming from, like, the the amount of work that Tony has to do to figure out that Killian's behind this is minimal. Like, it's insane how no one has this information yet. But also, like, figure, if he did kill the president, there would be, people would figure out what happened. There's no way this would go on. And also, the extremist soldiers don't work. Everybody's like, oh my god, he's got this cool technology. And even like the secretary of, uh, or the vice president who has the kid who is like missing a leg or whatever. It's like, what, you want him to blow her up? Like, and yeah, I think that that plan, the plan in Iron Man 3 is so complicated. He also, like, again, just make a new terrorist. Don't do Mandarin. Do, this is, I'm, I'm Mr. The British terrorist guy. Because now your Mandarin has been kidnapped by the real Mandarin. And the Mandarin, if he's, if this guy survived, and also he dies in his movies, so like obviously he stinks. But if, if, um, if Killian had survived, he would also be on the Mandarin's hit list. Probably higher up than Slattery. Especially when at the end he takes off his shirt and it's like, I'm the real Mandarin. And it's like, not only are you not the real Mandarin, none, none of you are the real Mandarin. There's a real guy who's the Mandarin. What does the Mandarin mean to you? Did he get like Chinese dragon tattoos on his chest? Cause like, what a loser for this rip off moment. Like, oh, I'm the Mandarin. I'm so cool. I'm not saying tattoos are a loser like dragons, but like the, just the amount of like, the amount that he's bought into this Mandarin ideology is so silly, but he did manage to get handsome. So I'm going to take him from disaster. Not a great plan. And also, you know what? You know what else? Also funny. He tries to like seduce Pepper Potts and it doesn't even kind of work. So, yeah, it is the last person on the list was Agatha all along the entire time. Spoilers for Fal- or for uh, excuse me, WandaVision. She is the villain of the show and she is um, played by Catherine Hahn, the nosy neighbor. I think her plan is OK. It's, it's, here's here's why her plan is dumb. First of all, never has a character been more hoisted by their own petard. Like Wanda goes into the room and she's like, what are these runes? And um, Agatha's like, yeah, these are runes. You can use them to stop magic. You didn't know that, and you never would have. Anyway, the scale of what she did was impressive. I agree, um, NB Sanders. I think what Agatha was able to accomplish was great. And she should be very proud. She does it in New Jersey, a wonderful state everyone loves. And she hasn't managed to get on Doctor Strange's radar. Isn't that weird? Agatha's plan is bad. There's no rhyme or reason what she's up to when you really get down to it. And she is hoisted by her own petard. And uh, that's not good. I th- So this is it. These are the guys. This is the whole kit and caboodle. Our great plans, the only ones are Kaecilius, Zemo, and Zola. And I think, I think that's fair. I think they're the three that you could be like, did he really lose though? There's other ones that could get close to that. I think maybe Killmonger. The thing with those guys, and I think what separates Killmonger and Thanos is a lot of the time they have a simple, a big flaw, right? There's, there's, their ego gets in the way. And one thing about Zemo, Zola, and Kaecilius is their ego wasn't really a part of it. They were just in it to win it and they, you know, they kept their eye on the ball and they won. I think our disasters, that's a pretty good list. So you've got Claw, Batrock, Laufey, Strucker, uh, Flag Smasher, Scorpion, Whiplash, Ronin, uh, Hayward, 
Taserface and Killian. I think those are all pretty. Those are th- those guys just man, their t- plans went poorly. Yeah, stay humble, everybody. That is a good lesson to learn. There's this is a lesson. This is like the more you know, uh, Star Wipe is just you know, keep your eye on the ball, come up with a goal, work to achieve it, and that's great. So yeah, look at all this great stuff. This was fun. I had a good time. So that's the tier list. Lots of fun surprises. I do think it's interesting how many of these plans intersect and how many of them have similar goals because characters are after similar things or have to deal with characters who have dealt with one of these other characters before. It's really a testament to Marvel's excellent world building. And honestly, because of how disorganized some of these other cinematic universes are, it's an achievement. And, you know, organizing stories can be hard, but it doesn't have to be thanks to this video sponsor, Campfire. Over 80,000 writers use Campfire Blaze to write better stories faster. Campfire Blaze is a browser-based writing application with a full slate of organizational tools that help you write stories and world build. Its manuscript module will safely store your project in the cloud and allow you to quickly reference details from your story with auto-tagging. Create dynamic characters with Blaze's character module and explore how they interact with the relationship web. The timelines are extremely flexible, allowing you to plan stories in ways that work for you. Keep track of all your world building with maps, locations, species, magic systems, cultures, and more. Your stories are private, but it's easy to share them or even collaborate with others. Blaze comes with 13 themes from crime to western, fantasy, sci-fi, romance, and even horror. Set the scene by creating a custom theme that matches your story's tone. Campfire Blaze receives new features every month and is free to use for smaller projects. If you need more space, you only have to pay for the features you need for as little as 50 cents. If you aren't satisfied, get your money back with their 30-day return policy. And you can use the code NVM21, which is good for 20% off all lifetime purchases of Blaze modules for all of 2021 when used at checkout. Or check out the link in the description. Write better stories faster with Campfire Blaze. Click the link in the description to learn more. As always, huge thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys are amazing. As you can see, I've kind of changed things over a little bit here. I have lights, and there's lights now, so that's fun. You'll see more of me in streams. I've been working on stuff like this. Patrons, you guys are amazing. We do the whiteboard videos. We also have the book club. This month, we're doing uh, the first two volumes of Midnighter by Steve Orlando. Got my copies right here. So really enjoying that. If you want to join, you can go to patreon.com slash Movies to find out more info. As always, listen to my podcast, Mostly Nitpicking. Every week, me and my co-host DJ and Dickens pick part of piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. We have done episodes on all of the Fast and Furious movies, most of the recent Marvel movies. We'll be doing one on Black Widow when that comes out. So anywhere you listen to your podcasts, we are at Nitpicking Pod on Twitter. Last thing, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, twitch.tv slash movies. That's where this stream originally ran. That's all I've got. Stay safe. I'll see you guys next time.